I want to take you back to the era of Rebecca Black's Friday, when YouTube was for Fred and fail videos and listening to Bangarang by Skrillex on repeat. The era that made Lo Anthony. Anthony Quintal, known online as Lo Anthony, started posting videos on YouTube aged just 10 years old, and by 2012 he had gone viral for his video Calling All the Basic Bitches, which popularised the use of the terms basic and basic bitch in internet slang. Anthony rode the wave of viral fame throughout his teenage years in the 2010s, continuing continuing to gain millions of followers across YouTube and Vine. He was an openly gay teenager growing up online when that was much more of a rare thing to encounter, and he grew a big community of like-minded kids of the internet and encouraged them to be themselves. However, in 2020, things took a turn when Anthony suddenly deleted all of his previous videos on YouTube and uploaded a new video announcing that he had turned to Christianity and that God had shown him a new path of celibacy. Many of his fans started to raise concerns that he had gone through a traumatic event that had forced him to try and convert and repress his sexuality that he had previously been so proud of, speculating that he might have even been a victim of gay conversion therapy. This is your Uncle Herman, I am still an alpha male, and if you are new to this channel, I make videos on internet culture. You can subscribe and turn the notifications on to be the first to know when I upload next, and I have a Ko-Fi page where you can go the extra mile to support me if you happen to be in the 1% of people who have disposable income right now. But without further ado, let's get into it. Anthony Quintal created his YouTube channel at 10 years old under the username Lo Anthony, combining Lindsay Lohan's surname with his own first name. He was your typical kid in his bedroom making silly videos on the internet for fun, back when you couldn't even monetize content on YouTube. It was literally just for posting webcam videos of you falling around for your friends. He was among the first wave of people to go suddenly viral on the site and accidentally fell into a life of internet fame. He was a big Britney Spears and Lindsay Lohan fan and had that fun kid of the 2000s energy that a lot of young YouTube viewers could relate to. Anthony was also one of the early stars of YouTube and Vine that managed to start crossing over to mainstream media pretty quickly. He was hired to host the Teen Wolf After Show on MTV at age just 14, and he was even in a movie in 2016 alongside Timothy Chalamet and Lily Reinhardt. It was a small-scale movie, and he didn't continue to pursue acting, but it shows that people in the traditional media who were confused by this new wave of internet celebrity were willing to take a chance on Anthony and take him seriously. His contribution to queer teenage pop culture was huge, with thousands of fans citing him as their saving grace during their closeted teenagehoods. He was an out and proud internet personality finding huge amounts of success by just being himself and filming quick, low quality videos on his phone or webcam that became the height of Vine era comedy. Anthony was always very authentic to himself and was seemingly supported behind the scenes by his mum, his friends and his fans alike. He always talked about RuPaul as a role model and in 2014 he got to drive around with him in a web series RuPaul Drives and they had a really sweet moment where RuPaul tells him to never be embarrassed about anything that he's put out online. You, are you embarrassed by the old videos? I am not embarrassed. Good. I will flaunt anything. Good. I will never be embarrassed of anything that I've done. I love it. Promise me that you always keep that. Of course. Okay. Good. In an interview in 2017 with Local Wolves magazine, Anthony was quoted saying, I've been through times of confusion, wondering why I attracted so many people online for doing what comes natural to me. In middle school and high school, I couldn't get people to appreciate my existence if I paid them to. With the internet, I got paid for my existence. Who you are is something you don't learn to cherish until you make yourself vulnerable to the world, until you say, this is who I am, I'm proud of it, and I'm not going to change for anyone. I've had that mentality since elementary school, when my male peers would taunt me for being too girly. In front of them, I'd make myself silent, letting them get satisfaction as they attempted to tear me down. Their words may have stung in the moment, but the self-love I had acted as my own bandage. Once you know your own relationship with yourself rules all, nothing can hurt you. It's sad to read his old interviews that he gave talking about how he was growing into his authentic self and loving the person that he was becoming. This narrative took a sharp turn in 2020, 10 years after he started making videos, when he suddenly deleted everything that existed of his online presence and posted a 40-minute video to his YouTube channel titled Jesus Delivers Surviving Sexuality. Up until this point, Anthony had taken a few years off the internet and was no longer posting videos, so this sudden return to the platform with a completely new outlook was a shock to a lot of his dormant followers who hadn't seen him online in years. All this time I was, like I said, trying to fit a circle into a square, trying to find God's love in all these other things. It's no coincidence that through pursuing my same-sex attraction, I was also addicted to alcohol. I was also addicted to weed. I was also trying hallucinogenics. I was also addicted to money. I was also addicted to views. I was addicted to attention. I was addicted to opportunity, opportunity that earth Lee pleasures brought to me chatting to strangers chatting to men chatting with men who wanted to fulfill me or thought they could 
going out there, meeting strangers, doing these things because I did not know God loved me. This video concerned a lot of people because Anthony was talking about this spiritual awakening in which he compared his past queer self to addiction, lumping his addiction to alcohol, weed, attention, and money in the same boat as same-sex relationships. He also talks in the video about how he was assaulted by a man when he was young and believes that this traumatic event led him to a so-called life of sin. The language that he was using suggested a huge sense of shame and regret around sexuality, and his continued use of the phrase same-sex attraction and references to trauma and addiction as a reason for this attraction made a lot of people believe that he had been a victim of conversion therapy. This prompted another first wave YouTuber, Tyler Oakley, who became famous around the same time as Lo Anthony in the early 2010s, to make a video titled Calling All the Anti-Gay Bitches, where he talks about the dangers of promoting feelings of shame around sexuality online and its links to conversion therapy. At the end of the day, my heart breaks for him because obviously he is in pain, but he is an adult and he has the right to do what he wants to do. That's his journey. He will get to where he needs to go. But my biggest issue is of course the people that might watch that and think, okay, well, here's an example of somebody who has come out the other side of conversion therapy and thinks, okay, maybe that is something that they can then do. And I just cannot sit by and watch that happen. I have to speak on it and I cannot believe I have to make a video in 2020 speaking on this, but clearly Clearly, this is something that I do need to say. In response to this, Anthony made a follow-up video titled Conversion Therapy and God's Truth, where he apologizes for the hurt that he caused with his initial video and tells his audience that he had not been to any type of conversion therapy and had come to Christianity and celibacy by his own accord. So, thus I say to you, I have been changed, but I do not support conversion camp or conversion therapy. I support abandoning consuming lusts both homosexual and heterosexual alike. No person is safe from lusting over whoever we are attracted to, both single or in marriage. This is a temptation that most likely, I can confidently say most likely, none of us are safe from, except Jesus, who is completely sinless and did not give in to any temptation whatsoever. And I'll talk about that later on. I support leaving our old ways behind, especially if we're saved. Ways ruled by the flesh, ways ruled by sensual want, and ways unreflective of how Jesus walked. In this video, he talks about how he has changed, but not from gay to straight. Instead, he has abandoned all of what he labels as lust, saying that any type of sexual attraction is a temptation that he wants to leave behind. Now, I want to support Anthony on whatever journey he's on, and I don't think that turning to religion is necessarily a bad thing. I know a lot of people can feel like a criticism of this type of thinking is a criticism of religion as a whole, and I want to express that this is not my intention with this video. I have no problem with him turning to Christianity, but I do have a problem with the continual labeling of sexuality as lust, temptation, and as sin, because this is what breeds feelings of repression and shame, and promotes this age-old idea that expressing any type of completely natural urge is something Something that you must resent about yourself and try to repress. I came to Jesus having experienced all kinds of intimacy, all of which left me feeling empty. But my Lord satisfies, with comfort of which he deals plenty, with a love he supplies oh so bountifully. With him my cup runs over. Psalm 23. His love has replaced my emptiness and with him my cup overflows. I did not pray the gay away. I did not come to God with self-hatred and fear that he did not love me for all that he made me to be. If anything, I came to God with a hate for the enemy, a hate for temptation, and a hate for the cycles that humanities are often caught up in. I do not believe God hates you for any reason, including our mistakes, our sin, and our neglectance of his presence. And yet, our Heavenly Father is not a God of passivity turning a blind eye to the ways we harm ourselves and damage the temple he built. In an interview in 2021 on a YouTube channel called Faith and Films, Anthony talks about how a lot of his viewers were accusing him of denying himself. And he talks about his previous life and how Christianity has shown him to be more careful with who he is. The main focus is, I think, what a lot of the comments on my videos are focused on is the denying of self that, um, that can be observed in my life. I'm denying myself in, in, in a multitude of ways. And my viewers um, have gotten to know someone who never denied himself, never said no to um, acting impulsively or acting unfilteredly, unapologetically, one might say. I always focused on just being me, whatever that entailed, no matter even if it hurt someone or if it offended someone. Um, 
if I was lying. Um, it was kind of validated both by myself um, and just by the internet because um, it was entertainment. So um, I never really questioned it. I just kind of lived unfiltered and just, you know, told everyone, just be yourself. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter what you do. Just be yourself. And that's just the key. Um, but when I met Christ, he showed me that my actions hurt people. My actions hurt myself. My words hurt. I have an impact. I'm, I have a presence in life that 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 is a gift. It's a gift to be alive. It's a gift to have a platform. It's a gift to, even if that platform is small or big, it's just a gift to have a voice. The concept of suppressing oneself is so interesting because it's deemed as bad in our society today. And I understand why everyone wants to be free. There's a lot of conversations about freedom of speech and how important that is in our, in our culture and society. So no one wants to be censored. No one wants to be canceled. We don't, we don't want that in our society. Um, but I think what Christ focuses on when he tells us to deny ourselves is that when we say no to ourselves and when we die to ourselves, we're coming alive in him. We're coming alive to um, our God, our maker, our creator, who is good, and our, our shepherd who leads us to green pastures and, and still waters. And um, so, yeah, that's kind of my response to suppression. It concerns me that he talks about this idea of suppressing yourself and being careful and how suppression should not be seen as a bad thing. Instead, he says that by actively suppressing and denying himself, he is coming alive to his faith in God, which to me seems like an oxymoron as if God is an all loving God, surely he would love the unsuppressed version of yourself. He talks a lot in this interview about the idea that giving into temptations is a weakness and that there are parts of you that you need to suppress. I mean, sure, there are parts of us that we do suppress. We don't share our most toddler brain animalistic thoughts with everyone, but the way he talks about it seems to put everything that he previously enjoyed under one umbrella. He's labeling his past self as a completely bad and unenlightened being, when in fact there are parts of that self, like his sexuality, that are not shameful and do not need to be suppressed. In fact, the more you suppress about yourself, the more it's just gonna build up inside and until you can't push it down anymore. The interviewer also references this particular Bible quote from Corinthians, which is often used to justify homophobia in Christian spaces and to promote things like conversion therapy. The quote reads, do you not know that wrongdoers will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, neither the sexually immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor men who have sex with men, nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor drunkards, nor slanderers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. And that is what some of you were, but you were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. Anthony's response to this homophobic quote was interesting, to say the least. You were sanctified and you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. That is so incredible. That, that's incredible that the Lord took something that had been used um, as really a means to further people's condemnation and now he's taking something in order to bring people and so in in the world of all these comments that are coming out saying oh my gosh you're hurting people you're you're doing this terrible thing you're getting also comments of people saying i was thinking about you i'm so happy that you were brought to christ i mean it's incredible my my friend kat brought up the fact that she was just just sitting down and she thought i wonder how anthony's doing and she hadn't probably thought about you in years and suddenly She's thinking about you and you're being brought to Christ. I mean, this is incredible. Oh, praise the Lord. I'm, uh, all I can say is praise the Lord because he's so good and he's active and it's our testimonies um, that show his work. I mean, this quote literally promotes the idea that queer love is immoral and something that you need to be washed and sanctified of. I also find it interesting that in swearing celibacy, this seems to mean that you must not only deny yourself sex, but also romantic love. Though he says he's not trying to pray the gay away, this idea of being washed and sanctified of these so-called sins definitely has the air of internalizing homophobic ideas. Lord is The Lord saves, Jesus saves, but what is he saving me from? And this is why we call sins by their name. He saved me from my sexual immorality. He saved me from my pride, which is at the, the crux of all of my sin. Um, he saved me from greed. He saved me from gluttony. He saved me from idolatry. Um, we, we don't talk about how sometimes idolatry can be, we're the God. We are the one that wants what we want, and we need it now. And we think that we're all-knowing, and we think that we have the plan. But... I lived a life where it was just me and my own desires and just the flesh. And that is enough for me to know that the Lord is good. Because when I came to him, it wasn't the same anymore. It wasn't the same 
cravings that needed to be filled. It was, wait, there's actually this peace that Jesus promises that is real. So what is the Christian celibacy lifestyle that Anthony says he has adopted and why might it be a cause for concern? The idea of celibacy in Christianity stems from the seven deadly sins where lust is listed as a sinful act. Lust is generally understood in this context to be intense sexual desire and a so-called sin of the flesh. Celibacy is often taken as a religious vow by people like nuns, monks and Catholic priests to show devotion to their faith. Some people also take this idea from the Bible that one's body is not their own but instead is a temple to God. There's literally a Bible Bible quote that reads, you are not your own, for you are bought with a price, so glorify God in your body. And so in this vein, any lust or sexual activity is seen as immoral as it's disrespecting the temple of God that is your body. Believe whatever you want to believe, I personally think that the repression of innate sexuality is a form of control as by keeping it as a taboo and shameful topic, you're denying people the right to understand their own bodies. Of course, there's a large asexual community and not everybody experiences sexual desire, but for those that do, so long as it is between consenting adults, it should not be a shameful act. If you believe that God created us after all, why would he have created us as beings who could have sex for pleasure if he didn't want us to do that? But hey, that's just my opinion. If this is what Anthony truly wants to do, then so be it. As I said, I am all for him finding solace in religion and growing as a person. I just hope that he's able to reach a place where he feels true freedom and authenticity that's not attached to any external ideas, but instead to his own authentic self, and that he doesn't feel like he needs to suppress everything that he once was to please a religious authority. I imagine that growing up in the public eye at such a young age must have been incredibly overwhelming, especially when you accidentally become famous like he did. And it's clear that Anthony has a lot of trauma from this time of his life, not to mention the onslaught of homophobia and hate comments that he would receive daily. At the time, he would make light of it and make videos responding to the hate comments in a fun way that his audience loved, but it must have been really hard to see all of that and to not let it affect you in some way. I just hope that this new identity is truly what he says it is, which is a liberation rather than an oppression of his true self. But as of a few days ago, there there is another unexpected twist to this story. Anthony has now joined the US Army. Low Anthony is no longer a presence on social media, but through his mum, fans were able to find out that he has now joined the military. In a post that his mum made last month with pictures of Anthony in army uniform, she wrote that he had graduated from the Delta Battery and was entering military life. Now, it's safe to say that a lot of his former fans were shocked, especially since the US military has a history of homophobia, excluding LGBT people from service until 1993, when the Don't Ask, Don't Tell Act was passed, meaning that people could join the military so long as they didn't reveal their true sexuality. Essentially, from 1993 to 2011, LGBT people could join, but they had to remain closeted and lie about it. The reason that I bring this up is to illustrate the fact that it's not really an institution where LGBT people have historically thrived. It's also just so far from the low Anthony that we grew up watching online to find out that he's not only a devout Christian now, but is also pursuing a military career. Of course, we all change dramatically as we go through life, and no one's expecting the teenage Anthony that was making short viral videos online to be that exact same person today. But to go from somebody who was openly gay and spoke about being proud of their sexuality to someone who has denounced it and seems to think that his entire former self was sinful is a concerning shift to watch. And the culture of the US military, which is typically seen as one of patriotism and hypermasculinity, is not something that aligns with anything that Anthony used to advocate for. Of course, not every person who joins the army has to be hypermasculine, but after the concerning videos that Anthony put up a couple years ago, this seems like another diversion on the road to accepting himself. Instead of continuing his trajectory of pride and authenticity, he seems to have taken himself in the complete opposite direction, one of denial and repression of his past self. I mean, he's openly said that he is suppressing himself and that he sees that as a good thing. I just hope that if he's feeling lost, that he finds himself and finds a sense of belonging, wherever that may be. I just could not have ever imagined this back in his heyday in 2012. It would be like telling me today that in 10 years, Trixie and Katya are going to renounce drag and become fighter pilots. So let me know your thoughts. Did you used to watch Low Anthony or do you know anyone who's gone down this same sudden path. Comment below and do like the video if you liked it as it really helps that damn algorithm. Otherwise, happy holidays. I've been your Uncle Herman and I will see you on the other side.